Uh, there are certain very distinctive voices in music, and we're going to hear from one of them in just a minute. That's Mick Hucknall. Uh, of course, in the 80s and 90s, hugely popular, been performing for nearly 40 years now, lead singer of Simply Red. And there's no sign of them stopping anytime soon. The band have a new single and album on the way. Before we chat to Mick, let's have a quick listen to some of those hits that you'll be so familiar with. Mix with us right now. Morning. Good morning. Does it How feel like does it feel like coming back home, coming to Manchester? Well, it does absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I'm particularly impressed with the uh, the building development. It's, it's astounding. It looks like some kind of American city I might have visited in the in the <laughs> when I first started out. Well, Salford has changed a lot yeah, over it's the amazing. last few years. But yeah. do you still have family and friends up in this part of the world? Uh, well, we were a very small family. There right. was just me and my dad. Yeah. So once he's gone, it's kind of yeah. zilch. There's nothing. Do a little, do a little time walk for us. When you, were, when there was little Mick Hucknall, I don't know, <laughs> eight, nine years old. When did, when, when did you know about the voice? When did the voice thing happen? Well, I did my first gig uh, uh, when I was about six. What were you singing? I was singing "I Want to Hold Your Hand" by the Beatles with a grown-up band. In a, in a, like in a, to an at, audience. At, at a wedding, at, at, at a wedding, and um, wearing a pair of Austrian lederhosen. Have we, do we have, um, please tell me there are no, pictures there was, of this that exist. What's crazy, there, apparently there was a tape, one of those real to real tapes made and it got lost. And they kept Mick trying Mick in lederhosen singing at a wedding. Well, my, one of my babysitters at that time, she went off, because uh, for East Manchester that was very glamorous to go on a skiing holiday and she brought me back a pair of Austrian lederhosen that I wore for this wedding. So we've all got, love a, we've to all see. got a picture in our heads it. now. Yeah, yeah. What would you have told that little six year old boy then if you knew you'd have a music career going over four decades now, Mick? Well, I've just always loved music. Um, I was into the Beatles at, at age six and uh, I've, I had my first record player when I was 10. I was buying records when I was 11. I'd just been buying records all the way through my teenage years. I used to save up money, you know, like, like lots of people, but really obsessively so. I love melody. Um, I respond to that. You know, music is something that kind of lives in the air and it affects people and they don't always know how or why. It's almost like a subconscious feeling people get from music. And that clearly is running through you still now because you've got new new single out. I think we can have a little listen to it now. OK. I recall a crowded smoky room And you and me had had enough of the fumes Better with you, honey, for the things that we'll never People love uh, trying to work out what's going on in lyrics. What's what's all that about? Well, most of the songs on this album were written 
during lockdown, during, I think that's 2021, isn't it, around that time? I don't know, it's weird, that period. It almost seems like it's, it didn't happen or something. It's like a time warp. So I, I, I just, like a lot of people, when you're at home, you think, well, what, what's going on? What, where am I? And the worst part of it is, the negative part would be that you realise that you don't have a great relationship because you're so close together and it's not working out. The best part of it is, is that you realise you've got a great relationship and that you spend so much time at work that you don't really appreciate the family that you have. And part of that is, with, with this song, is just realising that, you know, focusing on your family and focusing on the good things that you have in your life and not being so obsessed with your work. You know, that work is really something that you use to facilitate happiness within your family. And, and better with you is effectively that. The, the main line in the chorus that isn't on the video there is, it's so good to be together. That's, that's the main chorus line. Mm. And it's just that, that feeling that you want to share with people to get your priorities right, you know? In my case as a musician, I, I could tour the world every two or three years, but I choose to mainly just stay in Western Europe and the UK because I don't want to be away from my family that long. You could be away all year and never see them. I just don't want to live like that. But we do see amazing longevity, don't we, in musicians these days, and artists performing like well into their later life. And um, I mean, I mentioned 40 years. You'll, you'll be doing your 40th anniversary in 2025, is yeah. that right? Yeah. Um, there must still be a drive to, to get out there and perform and feel the rush of being in front of people. Oh, no, nope, without doubt. Sing your song. I mean, uh, but, but for a couple of months. Yeah. You know, but w one, of, one of the things that I noticed um, when we, uh, at the beginning of last year, uh, we, t we toured the UK and uh, it was pretty much a sellout tour. And I walked on the stage, and as I'm looking out of the stage, there's an empty seat here, there's an empty seat there. And there's a lady or a gentleman standing next to the empty seat. And the way we do the sets indoors is that we tend to do the slower songs in the first part of the show. So songs like, You Make Me Feel Brand New, Home, Holding Back the Years. And uh, on several occasions, it was pretty heartbreaking. You'd see somebody crying next to the empty chair and it suddenly dawned on me was that covid are they not there because of that because the, the show was sold out but one of the great joys of making music of being of writing songs is that by the end of the show that person's standing up clapping and smiling and feeling part of the entire event you know and it really when you see things like that it makes you so i feel so happy in the profession that I'm in. You must have had occasion, because you, your songs are, they're kind of anthemic. Uh, some of the older songs that people know really well. Do you ever have people telling you, oh, uh, I remember when, uh, it's a, a moment in someone's life kind of illustrated by a song, for a simply well, read song. It, it, again, it's one of the joys, because I could write a song that would be about something personal to me, but the great thing about music is, is that somebody else could listen to that song and say, well, that's about them and they interpret it in the way that they live their lives. And again, it's one of the great joys of writing songs that you can communicate. People say, I played this song at our wedding, or I played this song at my, at my dad's funeral, or something like that, you know? And it, it just really makes you feel that you are helping uh, to enrich people's lives. We, we must move on, but I just wanted to say very briefly, because you're such a hardcore Manchester United fan, you must be kind of enjoying seeing their recovery process under Eric Ten Hag, are you? Yeah, it feels like we've got... It feels like we've got a proper manager that understands the club or understands the culture. I, I feel this is the closest we've been to replacing Sir Alec Ferguson. This is, this is the guy that some... I mean, some of the other people, they tried their best, but just to create that magic is, is not easy. Don't fancy buying it again, the club? I never... <laughs> It was that was all. Was that a myth? Rumors, Bit of a myth. Right, okay, rumors. fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Love you to see you this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much.